Father, it's in the name of the Lord Jesus. The people of God have come to the house of worship, this holy place. This place that we have sanctified and have lifted up before you. We don't know what the day is going to hold, Father, but we make a conscious decision to come to the house of worship. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. It is in this place where we have the expectation to receive from heaven. We have an expectation to receive words that will change our lives. Words that will cause us to be delivered from every sickness, every disease, every germ and every virus, every stronghold. We have this expectation from heaven that, he, that heaven would unlock her gates and that she will pour out blessings that we won't have room enough to receive. We are in this place, God, with great expectation. It's your love, God, is why we're here. We, you, you first loved us. We weren't smart enough. We weren't big enough. We weren't bold enough. that's been on my heart for some time. That there is this fight, this war, if you will, in the earth today. And it's not just in the physical realm, but it's also in the spirit realm, in Christendom, to refresh and to restore this astonishing range of between 52 and 55% of churches that has closed and have not reopened. As a preacher of the gospel, as a pastor of this local church, it gives me great concern. The fight for those who have claimed salvation and have not returned to the house of God. I, I get it. I, that we have, as the body of Christ, we, we pray for the souls of, of those who are not saved. But today, we are now contending for those who are already saved. We're contending for those who have not returned to the house of God. Statistics says that fewer than 50% of Americans claim to be members of the house of God. Too many are professing uh, to practice their faith in their own way. You know, the Bible says there's a way that seemeth right unto man, but it's not. It leads to destruction. God has given us instructions that we're to be in the house of God. My cry and my petition before God is to bring back those that are in captivity to this world system. From this global pandemic, where loved ones perished. Both believers and non-believers have lost their hope in God. Many are still angry at Jehovah. Because 
in their eyes, he did not deliver. All of us know someone. All of us in some way have been connected to someone who perished because of this pandemic. Many are still angry with God. Many are offering deals to God. If you do this for me, if you save mom, if you save that, if you save my child, if I can hold on to my job, making bargains with the Holy God. Many of us are here still looking for healing, still looking for restoration, still looking for help from lost of revenue, finances, resources, from COVID-19 and all of its variants. And don't be fooled, it's still on the earth today. Now kudos and, and, and much applause to those who relied on social media, attempting to stay connected to the body of Christ, the believers. Unfortunately, too many have refused or have become too relaxed. And I dare say lazy. Swept away by comfortability. But God, he's calling us, all of us, unto himself. The God of refreshing and restoration is calling his children. He's calling the just who should be living by faith. By faith in the word of God. I can hear the Lord says, come out from exile saith the Lord. I am your refreshing spirit, soul, and body. I am the Lord thy God that healeth me. I will give you this morning this current day warning. The danger of apostasy. The falling away of the believer of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, Pastor, what is this apostate? What is it? It is when someone who has once believed and then rejects the truth of God. Those who once believed are now falling away, shrinking back to their old ways of living, refusing to abide in the love of God. The spirit of apostasy is in the earth and we're not even aware of it. I bind that spirit right now in the name of Jesus Christ of the living God. And I release the spirit of emancipation and release from the gates of heaven even now in the name of Jesus. I don't know about you, child of God, but I, we've got too many family members and too many friends and, and loved ones who've not received this gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. They have, have not come to know that the kingdom of God has come. Amen. We have this mandate. Mm. Every last one of us to let dying men and women know that Jesus, the Christ of God, is coming. Yes, we still need to let them know that the wages of sin is still death. But the gift of God yes. is eternal life through Christ Jesus. Yes. We're still to let them know for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believing in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. Amen. We need to let dying men and women know about the love of our Savior. Yes, hallelujah. I'm, I'm, I'm a little passionate this morning. Hallelujah. When when I see the house of God not filled to capacity, yes. there was a time, child of God, when we could run to the house of God. Yes. There was nothing that could stop us yes. from getting to Hallelujah. the throne of grace. Hallelujah. No matter hell or high water yes. would come, we would make our way yes. to the house of yes. God. Hallelujah. When did this happen that now I don't have to go? Wow. I can lean back in my easy chair. I, I can use the remote. I, I, we've come too comfortable. Yes, say that. Yes. Say the word. Again, I'm passionate. Glory. 
And if anything, speaking on the behalf of those ministries and churches that have closed, that have not reopened. Again, when you preach this gospel, you do it unashamedly. That's right. Glory to God. I know you have your Bibles this morning. I pray that you would open up to Psalms 133. In the book of Psalms 133 in verse 1. Won't you read this with me? How truly wonderful and delightful it is to see brothers and sisters living together in sweet unity. It's as precious as the sacred scented oil flowing from the head of the high priest Aaron. Dripping down upon his beard and running all the way down to the hem of his priestly robes. Yes. This harmony can be compared to the dew dripping from Mount Hermon, which flows down upon the hills of Zion. Indeed, this is where Yahweh has decreed his blessings yes. will be found, the promise of life forevermore. It is in this Passion Translation Bible that I love how it, it brings it all together. We have declared that this year is the year of refreshing and restoration. And so we see here that God wants us to be refreshed. He wants to restore us. And one of the ways this happens is when we come together in the body of Christ. Yes. Pastor Carol taught about last week about the woman with the issue of blood and she's she had to press her way through and she said, if I can just but touch the hem of his garment, she knew something. Mm, yes. And what she knew, I would declare that she knew something about Psalms 133. Glory. That the anointing of the oil that when it would pour down over Aaron's head, who was the priest of God, that the oil would run down his face and down his beard and down onto his cloak and it would end at the hem of the garment. Glory to God. I liken it unto David when David said, my cup runneth over. He says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And the vision of that is pouring into a cup. Yes. Pouring your favorite beverage into a cup. And then as the cup fill up, and then it overflows. Yes. It overflows past the cup into the saucer, down onto the table, and drips yes. down onto the floor. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That you ought to have this impression. That I will dwell in the house yeah. of the Lord forever. Yes. Here in this harmonious scripture, we see that God is a family man. Yes, he is. He's a father that inhabits the praises of his people. Yes. Don't you know, child of God, that God, he desires to be more with you than you desire to be with him. That's right. That's how much the Savior, that's how much God the Father loves you and I. That he wants to be in your presence more than you want to be in his presence. God wants to be more here in the earth than he wants you to be in heaven. Because he's a father, he's a nurturer, he's a lover. We have gathered here together in his name. When we do this, he's in the presence. He's in the midst of us all. That we're not to forsake the gathering of ourselves. That you, child of God, you, child of God, are important to the body of Christ. Amen. Those of you that are watching, you are important to the body of Christ. Where every joint supplies. Yes. Yes. Get back on the wall. Yes, glory. Ah. Hallelujah. Get back to your assignment. Yes, sir. Get back to your deaconing. Get back to your ministering. Get back to your singing. Get back to your ushering. Get back to your trusting. Get back to believing. Hallelujah. Your log is needed for the fire of God. That we would be the light on a hill. The beacon of salvation to a dying world. There is this restorative power when we stay together yes it is somebody say stay in the flow stay in the, stay flow. In the flow stay in the flow that we need to allow god's provision to be poured over your life and mine that the goodness of god like the waters that flows over a rock in a stream 
It is something surreal about watching water being run over or the, the flowing of a stream over rocks and boulders. Do you realize that the power that water has, that it causes things to change? It can shape rocks. It can shape boulders. It can shape even your life. And when we have this anointing of God that pours out over our lives, it will shape us yes. if we allow it. This reshaping power, it's God's provision being poured out over your life and mine. Turn your Bibles to Psalms chapter 126. Back to our base scripture for the year. We are 22 days into this new year and, and this first month is almost over already. In Psalms 126 for, uh, 26 verse 4, read that with me. Now, Lord, do it again. Restore to us our former glory. May streams of your refreshing flow over us until our dry hearts are drenched again. I love that. The, 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 the tra Passion Translation puts it in such a, a term where it's easy for us to visualize and capitalize what God is saying. And, and the Lord, I, what we need the Lord to do is to flash flood our lives with his goodness and his restorative power. A flash flood, child of God, is caused by heavy or excessive rainfall yes, yes. in an abbreviated period. Showers of blessings. Now, flash floods are usually characterized by raging torrents after heavy rains that rip through riverbeds urban streets or mountain canyons and sweeping everything before them. We've all seen that. Yes. If this occurs when too much rain yeah. falls too fast, too long for the ground to absorb all of the flow of the water. I don't know about you, child of God, but that's the kind of blessing. That's the kind of blessing that I'm looking for. That's the blessings that I want from heaven. Flash! Flood me, Jesus. Let me stand in the wake of your blessing. Let me stand in the rain. Glory to God. Flash flooding is characterized by this intense, high-velocity torrent of water that occurs in an existing river channel with little to no notice. I don't care how you bless me. <laughs> you ain't got to tell me that you know my, you ain't got to tell me when all I know is if I know that the blessings is coming I don't know I kind of like it to in the summertime one of my favorite times in the summer is when you know the rain is coming that you can smell the coming of the summer rain I don't want to know Yes. Take in to know that from the West, glory to God, that blessings is on the way. The showers of the blessings of God is about to take place. Oh, just do it, Jesus. Just, just do it. My dry attitude, our cantankerous trust in God, flood our lives. Flash flood our faith that we can dream again. Yes, Lord. Holly. Dream again of you manifesting who you are, that you are Jehovah Eliashib, the God of restoration. Yes, Jehovah Eliashib, the God of restoration and refreshment. Yes. Isn't that good? Yes, Glory to God. Turn your Bibles to Numbers chapter 11. We talked about this a, a couple of weeks ago in Numbers chapter 11. These were the children of Israel and they had already been set free from Egypt. They had already been set free by the deliverer. That God had already delivered over a million Jews out of captivity in Egypt. And now they're in this wilderness. And, and, and here's what happens in verse between verse 4 and 6. And the scripture says the misfits. The misfits were the mixed multitudes. That when God delivered the children of Israel out of Egypt, it wasn't just the Israelites. There were other nationalities. There were yes. other uh, types of people that left along with Israel. Yes. That's right. So the misfits or the mixed multitudes uh, among the people, among Israel, had a craving. And soon they had the people of Israel whining. Why can't we have meat? We ate fish in Egypt. And got it free to say nothing of the cucumbers and, and the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlic. But nothing tastes good out here. All we get is manna, manna, manna. 
This scripture is a picture of what refreshing and restoration is not. Amen. Come on. Come on. The children of Israel were more familiar with the ways of Egypt, more familiar with the ways of the world. They still had Egypt alive in their hearts. They still had the past burning desires in their heart. God provided what he wanted for them, which was manna. But they wanted to go back to bondage. They slipped back into their old ways of the world system. Understand, child of God, that once you've been delivered, once you've been brought out of darkness into God's marvelous light, the world has nothing for you. That's right. Jesus. Today we have seasoned saints who refuse to return back to the place where they first believed. Mm. How do I know that? All I need to do is look out amongst us. Any pastor in the earth today can tell you when they look out amongst them that they don't see the same yes. leaders. Jesus. They don't have the same elders. Mm. They don't have the same administrators. Mm. They don't have the same deacons. We don't have the same people who had a heart to serve. Yes. Mm -hmm. oh. But when atrocity came, mm. where did they really believe? Well, come on. I can't tell you how much it pains us yes. as men and women of God that we are now have to contend for those who already believe. Come on, Come on. Come on. Hey, hey. Come on. As a people, again, we've always had the ability to run to the house of God. But today there seems to be, child of God, a different narrative. The issue. I make this declaration that the issue is our stinking thinking. Yeah, we need to change the way that we think. Yeah. Romans chapter 12. Yes. It's an elongated scripture, but it needs to be read. Paul, again, was writing to the believers in Rome. And he began to talk to them in terms in which they would understand. And Paul writes... Between verse 1 and 2, he says, So therefore, brothers and sisters, since God has shown us great mercy, great mercy. I beg, Come urge, on. appeal to you, yes. you to offer your lives, yourselves, your bodies as a living sacrifice to him. Yes. Your offering must be only for God, holy and pleasing to him. Yes. Which is the spiritual or authentic, true or appropriate, fitting or rational, reasonable yes. way for you to worship. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Verse 2. Do not be shaped by, conformed to, pressed into a mold by yes. this world age. Instead, somebody say instead. instead. Be changed within, transformed by a new way of thinking. Or changing the way that you think, the renewing of your mind, yes, sir. then you will be able to decide. Uh -huh. yes, We're sir. in a new year and, and we have decisions that need to be made. There's some things that you need, need to do tomorrow. There's some decisions that you need to make last week hey. that you've been pondering. Hey. Then you will be able to decide, discern, test, and approve yes. Yes, sir. what God wants for you yes. is God's will. You will know what is good and pleasing to him and what is yes. perfect. Glory yes. to God. Yes. Our refreshing comes from the renewing of our mind, renewing our mind of what God has promised. The Apostle Paul, again, he uses this language of, that they will understand because they understood something about sacrifice. It's a complete giving of oneself over to God. Sacrifice is part of of our worship. That's right. yeah. Come on and say that with me. Sacrifice is part of our worship. Yes, sir. Refreshing comes when we can see like God sees. Come on. Refreshing comes when we can love like God loves. Yes. Yes. Refreshing comes when we can see eye to eye with God. That's when our refreshing comes. Yes. When we can hate what God hates. Jehovah Elijah, the God of restoration, the heart, the love, the drive that God needs to refresh us. Yeah. 
We must have faith to believe in this refreshing. Must have faith to believe in this restoration. That only Jehovah Eliashib, the God of restoration, that he will bring in your life and mine. Glory to God. Last scripture. Psalms chapter 19. The psalmist writes, between verse 7 and 8, he says, The law, I love that. The law of Jehovah is what? Perfect. And what does it do? It restores the soul. We've come to this understanding and this mindset that the soul is our mind, our will, and our emotion, our thinker, our chooser, and our feeler. That God's law, his word is perfect. It restores how I think. It restores how I feel. It restores my will. Amen. That the testimony of Jehovah is sure. The testimony of God, it makes wise the simple. Yes. The precepts, verse 8 says, of Jehovah are right. Rejoicing the heart. The commandment of Jehovah is pure, enlightening the eyes, the Bible says. Yes. The word of God is perfect. Yes. There's not too many things in this world that are perfect, but the word of God is perfect. Yes. Jesus. An assignment of God's word is not only to perfect us, but to restore us, yes, sir. Yes, sir. to return us to the plan of God, his direction for our lives, rerouting us. We, we have GPS systems today that reroute us. The word of God, it reroutes us. It lets us know that, that it may, it's a better way. Get us back into the plan of God. Put, get us back into the house of God. Put our log back on the fire. We appreciate you. We appreciate you. Your log is burning bright. You're adding to the fire and the atmosphere of the presence of Almighty God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We ask that the Lord, they will open our eyes that we may agree completely yes. with him. That the eyes of our understanding be made perfect. That we have these fresh eyes. Refresh us again, O oh God. Like the oil that ran down Aaron's beard. A release of God's goodness. That the gates of heaven open up and pour out blessings that we don't have room enough to receive. The fresh anointing oil of God's word. That it will be like the dew of heaven. If you know anything about Mount Horeb, Mount Hebron, in Jerusalem, in Israel, that, that that the dew would fall so heavy that you thought that it would have rained all night. That the area around Mount Hebron is so lush and green. But the further you get away from Mount Hebron, then you see all the dry land. But then again, there's a time when there's a, a rain that comes in and nourishes the land. That, that flash flood, that, that the rains don't have no place else to go. And I declare to you, child of God, that you will begin to experience God's goodness in your life. That he begin to pour out in such a fashion that that crusty, dusty place in your life become enriched with God's goodness. That you begin to be saturated with the love and the, and the fervor of heaven. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Glory to God. That is my declaration to you this morning. Father, we ask that you would water our territory. Enrich our walk with Jehovah Eliashim, the God of restoration. Is that all right? Come on and stand to your feet. Come on and stand to your feet. We'll make this confession of faith this morning. Hallelujah. Somebody say, Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Our confessions of faith this morning. Come on, say this with me. Jehovah has decreed. His blessing over my life. And I will be found. In the promise of life. Forevermore. Showers and streams. Of God's refreshing. Flow over me. Until my dry heart. Is drenched again. I will not whine. But desire. Only what heaven has for me. I offer my life a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable unto God. I'm the justified one. Because I live by faith. I will know 
what God has purposed for my life. My eyes have been enlightened. And my understanding is made sure. I further declare that Jehovah Eliashib is the God of my refreshing and the God of my restoration. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. With every head bowed. With every eye closed. Father, we believe that we heard from heaven today. Refresh us. Restore us. We pray, Father, if there are those that are among us or those that are watching that have never received you as their personal Lord and Savior. We actually would say this simple prayer with us. Dear Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner and I need to be saved. I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus. I believe in my heart, God, that you raised Jesus from the dead and that he is seated with you in heavenly places. That Jesus died for all of my sins, past, present, and future. Lord, it's me. I give my heart back to you. Refresh me again. Receive me again with open arms. Father, I receive baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of praying in the Spirit. As the Spirit of God give utterance. Give me the understanding also in Jesus' name. Father, is this the place where you have me to worship? Thank you for saving. Thank you for loving. At Harvest Christian Ministries International, we believe that salvation is just that simple. Being restored back to God is just that simple. Receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of praying in the Spirit, with the understanding and also is just that simple. To receive a place of worship, a place that you can call home, is just that simple. If that's you today, if, that's, if, if out of these four things, if anyone that's among us have need of any of those four things, we just come forward. Those that are watching, wherever you are, you can lift up raised hands and believe that you have received these things. And it is my earnest prayer that Holy Spirit will make him, himself known unto you so that you will understand it. And that when you pray in your heavenly language that God will give you the understanding also. It is a gift from heaven. God desires for us to communicate with heaven and to have the understanding also. This place, Harvest Christian Ministries International, located here at 1775 Sand Mine Road here in Davenport, Florida. Here in the Four Corners area, we're here. We're proclaiming this gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I pray over the people of God today. I declare, Lord God, that health and healing to all of their flesh, from the top of their head to the sole of their feet, God. Lord, I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus, beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as their soul prospers, their mind, their will, their emotion, their thinking, their choosing, their feeling. Make known unto them the hidden mysteries of God today. Father, I declare that something good is going to happen in their life. I declare that something good is going to happen in their lives today. And it's in Jesus' name and all the church, amen.